This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. Joining us on a very special episode of Coffee with Kenobi, we have the return of the wonderful Ashley Eckstein. Ashley, welcome back to Coffee with Kenobi. Uh, thank you so much, Dan. It's, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Yes, likewise, my friend. Well, let's go ahead and start back in December of 2019. We chatted briefly at the Rise of Skywalker premiere before the movie debuted, but little did I know that Ahsoka Tano was going to be a part of the final film in the Skywalker saga. Wow. Talk to me about what that was like to find out, record it, and then to be in a theater to experience it with an audience. Oh, it was truly surreal when I found out that Ahsoka was going to be included in The Rise of Skywalker. Um, you know, I there was no better place to find out that it was a possibility than Star Wars Celebration in Chicago. I, um, I, I found out, uh, last April, but, um, they, they, they actually wanted me to record some lines at celebration. And I was like, oh my gosh, are, this is crazy. Am I going to have to find like a broom closet somewhere in the convention center and, and record <laughs> these lines? Um, but it turns out, uh, a couple weeks later, we recorded some temp lines, but then they told me that it was a huge maybe that, these lines would be included. So I didn't allow myself to get my hopes up. And they said, if this scene is included, you'll find out in October and you'll come back in and re-record the lines. So as best as I could, I I put it out of my mind because like I said, I didn't want to get my hopes up and then, you know, find out that the scene got cut and be disappointed. So I, um, I, you know, I tried to forget about it as best you can. And, you know, the first week of October comes, second week of October comes, and, and I hear nothing. And finally, I got a call from my agent, and um, they said, you know, you have a record session at Bad Robot. And I, I went in, and um, there's only three people in the room, and two of them were Matthew Wood and J.J. Abrams. And um, I got to uh, J.J. Abrams' couldn't have been nicer. Uh, he introduced himself and he thanked me for being in the film, which blew my mind. Uh, <laughs> I wow. said, thank you for, you know, letting me be in the film. Um, and then of course, Matthew Wood is a great friend. And that scene was really, I mean, he was instrumental to that scene. And um, it was about a 20 minute voiceover session. And, uh, you know, it just couldn't have been a cooler opportunity. And um, JJ was so, I mean, he exceeded all my expectations. And um, and I was thrilled to be included in the film. I think, you know, for Ahsoka to be uh, included in that way in the Skywalker saga of films is, is really just incredible. Oh, it's, it's paramount. I mean, we know as Star Wars fans that she is a, a critical part of this. So then you're in the theater experiencing it with an audience. I bet that must have been wondrous. Oh, yes. Well, I didn't allow myself to um, to believe that, you know, my voice was in the movie until I heard it myself. And um, the first time I saw it was actually at the premiere. So at the L.A. premiere, you know, the yeah. world premiere, um, I was sitting in the theater and uh it was pretty cool because I was surrounded by all of my fellow actors. I mean, the whole Clone Wars cast was there. It was just really, really special. So, um, and I didn't even know what line I was going to say because I actually recorded all of the lines that you heard in that montage. And I think they, you know, just mixed and matched um, everyone's voices. So I was, I was sitting on the edge of my seat because I didn't even know what I was going to say. Wow. I have, I have goosebumps just thinking about what that must have been like. It's, Really extraordinary. Well, season seven of The Clone Wars, speaking of extraordinary, we finally got the return of this beloved series and get to see where Ahsoka is after the traumatic events of the end of season five when she leaves the Jedi Order. So for you, what did we learn about Ahsoka through her experiences with the Martez sisters? You know, 
I love the arc with the Martez sisters, with Trace and Rafa. Um, you know, I, as, as I've, I've, I've read everyone's comments, and I know everyone has been eagerly awaiting the Siege of Mandalore arc, but for Soka and her storyline, those episodes with Trace and Rafa are crucial um, to Ahsoka's journey because we need to see Ahsoka away from Anakin and Obi-Wan and her, you know, her past life as a Jedi, you know, that's all we knew. We, we need this glimpse of Ahsoka by herself and, you know, figuring out who she is, what she stands for, what she believes in. Um, and it's really important for Ahsoka to even learn from other people outside of the Jedi Order. And, you know, Ahsoka learned so much from Trace and Rafa. Trace and Rafa learn from Ahsoka. And I think we see a different Ahsoka now with the Siege of Mandalore because of the arc with Trace and Rafa. I agree. And I love the fact that she is legitimately a fulcrum between these two sisters. <laughs> hey, she, she literally is. She literally is. I didn't think about it that way. But, um, you know, it's Ahsoka is is a little bit of both. You know, she's mm-hmm. a little bit of Trace, a little bit of Rafa. Um, and, you know, the perspective that they bring to Ahsoka um, is, is just very cool. And, you know, I also love to see their friendship because, you know, we didn't get to see Ahsoka with her own peers very often. You know, she was oftentimes with, um, you know, uh, alongside people that were older than her. And so um, it was very cool to see Ahsoka with, you know, with, with peers. Oh, I, I completely agree. And it's just, it's important to her. I think her elevation and uh, our understanding of her as a character, how she relates to other people. I mean, because she's, she's very much an inspiration uh, there's this great moment after, of course, seeing the first couple of episodes of the Siege of Mandalore. It's fair to say that her impact on this mythology has gone to a completely different level. The standout for me personally is this philosophical discussion that Ahsoka, Anakin, and Obi-Wan have before Ahsoka departs for Mandalore in the first episode of this arc. To me, it's a perfect snapshot of the paradox the Jedi and the Republic walk. Talk about the differences in everyone's belief system here. You know, that scene, I think, perfectly, uh, uh, perfectly, you know, represents each of their personalities. You know, uh, Obi-Wan, um, you know, obviously we, we even see it with uh, Bo-Katan, you know, kind of calling him out with his, you know, relationship with the Duchess Satine. Yeah. And, you know, Obi-Wan is very, you know, by the book with um, the Jedi Order and, you know, definitely involved in the politics. And, you know, I, I think um, he is, you know, when I, when I often think of Ahsoka, I think she, you know, really has taken on uh, kind of the rules of being a Jedi and she, she tries to be very by the book like Obi-Wan. But then you have Anakin and Anakin is so spontaneous. He thinks on his feet. He's, he's willing to bend the rules. And, you know, in that scene, we see Anakin, you know, listening to Obi-Wan, but not getting the answer he wants. So then he thinks outside of the box and, you know, finds ways to bend the rules. And then you have Ahsoka in the middle, and she understands what Obi-Wan is saying and respects it. She doesn't agree with it, but she respects it because she does respect the rules of the Jedi Order. But then... She was taught and most influenced by Anakin, and um, I think she loves how he, you know, comes up with the conclusion he does, and he bends the rules, and she says, okay, well, if Obi-Wan's fine with it, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so I love that scene, actually. Thank you for bringing that up, because it perfectly represents their personalities. It really is poignant, and, it, and it's sort of a wonderful way to handle... Uh, differences in opinion in in sort of negotiation, which I think is paramount to Jedi and actually something we could certainly learn in our daily lives as well. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I I think, you know, we're all different. We all have different opinions and, and personalities, but um, you know, I think, you know, just 
being willing to understand someone else's point of view and have a discussion about it and listen. Um, I think, you know, oftentimes we could come up with, with, uh, I would say solutions easier if we, if we took that approach. Hey, amen to that. So, uh, also on that episode, what did it mean for you uh, the first time you saw the animation featuring Ahsoka's reunion with Rex and the clones, courtesy of Anakin Skywalker? There is a lot to unpack. <laughs> oh, dear. That scene, oh, that scene is one that I've been waiting for ever since, uh, ever since Celebration London. So, I, you know, if if whoever is listening, if, if, if you haven't seen it, um, there is video of a panel we did at Celebration London. And I, I think it's called like, you know, the untold tales of Ahsoka or, mm. um, or something like that. But, um, you know, Dave, I was on this panel with Dave Filoni and Pablo Hidalgo and Dave uh, shared a lot of concept art from the Clone Wars from episodes that had never been made. And um, I wasn't aware what he was showing on the panel. And he showed the concept art from that scene. And I was so overtaken by emotion, I instantly burst into tears. Um, because to be honest, I was so sad. I was sad that we were never going to get to make that scene. Um, it just it kind of broke my heart. And, you know, because in my mind at that time, I thought there was no way the Clone Wars would ever come back. So fast forward to now, the fact that that scene is finally made, that we finally get to see it. Um, I burst into tears again, but this time it was, it was happy tears, you know, you know, knowing that we got to actually give the series and give Ahsoka the proper finale it deserves. I agree. And it just, you know, between Anakin, the, the saluting uh, and Ahsoka's humility and deference that she doesn't think she deserves to be saluted and how they just gracefully address that. But say, no, you we respect you. You are one of us. It was just so beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. I, I love that scene as well. It's one of my favorites, literally, of the whole series. I, I totally agree. The animation really in all of season seven has been gorgeous. The series has always featured prolific animation, but this, the modifications, I feel like they've been really stunning. Talk about how Ahsoka's her look in this arc, especially the siege of Mandalore and what it says about her. Well, you know, I can't speak to even the differences in animation because there are slight differences. Um, You know, Dave Filoni did his best to bring back, the original Clone Wars team, but, you know, it just wasn't possible. Um, you know, so many people are, were on to different projects and different jobs. So, um, you know, the, the show does look slightly different. And in my opinion, I mean, it's beautiful. Mm. It's, it's just stunning. The animation, um, they, they literally did, in my opinion, such an outstanding job. Um, But, you know, I I think what we see with Ahsoka, we see her in a new outfit, um, uh, you know, which is really cool. I, I, you know, those are questions for Dave Filoni. I can't speak to, you know, the, the outfit changes or the costume design. But what I can speak to is, uh, her difference in personality. Uh, it was something that we were really mindful of and we talked about a lot in the recording studio. And, um, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, the age of her voice, because uh, at the beginning of every season, I would ask, you know, what age is Ahsoka? So, you know, how, how much older should I make her sound? And so what we, what we settled on is even though she's, you know, still around the same age as Ahsoka in season five of The Clone Wars, you know, she's different. She's walked away. She's now been on her own. And so she's somewhere in between season five of the Clone Wars and, you know, how she sounds in Star Wars Rebels. Um, and so we settled on a sound that was kind of in between those two voices. 
but also even her personality. You know, she's no longer the, the snippy Padawan. I mean, we see it a little bit, like when she says to Rex, you know, race you to the bottom, and then she says, beat you. Um, there are still moments where we see her snippy personality, but we also see her being very serious. You know, serious with Obi-Wan, serious with Anakin, um, and then definitely serious with Maul. So um, it's definitely an older Ahsoka, uh, not just in, in years, but more so in experience. Right. No, very well said. And and I and I love that, too. And, and to me, just as in, putting on my English teacher hat, when I when I see her the way she is, is dressed for this arc, to me, it just shows someone who is mature and is taking on her own identity and it's kind of got this samurai inspiration this is vanessa marshall and you're listening to coffee with kenobi as everyone knows mei and mouse fan travel is the official travel partner of coffee with kenobi they are wonderful and have always been so great and kind and supportive to me and my family both for our travel and for travel for the show naturally recently travel is very very different in fact it's not going on right now at all with everything going on in the world and the good news is that with mei and mouse fan travel they are going to help you have peace of mind. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel wants you to know that you are valued clients, but you're a part of the MEI family. They are putting their decades of experience to work to guide you through this uncertain time. They are going to be your advocates and are going to keep you informed and prepared to travel with confidence when you are ready, when you are comfortable. And they are suggesting that you postpone but don't cancel. They're still open for business. They will help you dream of your next trip. It doesn't have to be in 2020. It can be 2021 and beyond. This is why I love and trust MEI and Mouse Fan Travel because they will take care of it and me. And they will you too. They're going to be looking up things and helping me and all of you to have peace of mind so that when you're ready, when things have settled down, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel will be the place for you to go. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, of course, or go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel. The action sequences, they've been completely jaw-dropping, cinematic, and wonderful, and especially the moment you just mentioned when Ahsoka races Commander Rex to the surface of Mandalore and leaps out of that Republic gunship. I can tell you what, after I watched that for the first time, my six-year-old and I looked at each other and we both said at the same time, wow, fortunately he didn't jinx me, so that's good. <laughs> but but how to you, I feel like this scene punctuates her return to the fight for the galaxy. What do you think? Oh my gosh, that scene is incredible. I, I watched that scene and at the end of it, my jaw was like dropped to the floor because, you know, keep in mind, we record our lines before they do the animation. So, of course, I, you know, I read the uh, read the descriptions in the script, but they it truly doesn't describe what they're animating. And so when I envision what's happening, it's never as cool as what it actually is once they do the animation. So when I saw that scene of, of Ahsoka, you know, jumping out of the gunship and then racing Rex to the bottom and jumping from ship to ship and, you know, attacking people, but then saving people and then, you know, just uh, landing with her lightsabers, uh, you know, amidst all the fiery, <laughs> you know, flames and, and smoke and then just so subtly, you know, says, looks at Rex and says, beat you. I mean, it's just so Ahsoka, <laughs> but it's so kick butt and so incredible. I, my jaw like dropped to the floor. It, me too. It's, it's the time capsule moment. I mean, it, it really, really is. So let, let's shift gears a little bit and we'll talk about, I am a Padawan, the new little golden book. It's wonderful and inspiring. Of course, this is not the first book that you have written, but what made this project extra special? This project was extra special because it was a little golden book. And, you know, I grew up reading the little golden books. I, I literally learned to read, uh, because of the little golden books. 
And um, it was a special, you know, uh, routine. Every night before bed, we had a giant bookcase and I got to pick out a different little golden book that, that my parents would read um, as a bedtime story. And, you know, so when Lucasfilm actually called me and asked me if I would write this, and I instantly said yes. Like it was literally probably the fastest thing I've ever said yes to in my life. Um, you know, uh, just because it was truly bucket list level. But, you know, then I let panic set in a little bit because I'm like, uh oh, can, can I do this? I'm not sure I can do this. Um, but I, you know, I locked myself in my room one day. I, I binge watched The Clone Wars and I picked out my favorite moments and my favorite lessons over the course of the series. And, I put those in the book and I actually had a really, uh, really fun time writing it. Well, it definitely shows. I mean, even the cover represents to me, one of the most important parts of Ahsoka's growth too, with, with her training those younglings too. Oh, definitely. I, you know, I tried to put all of the iconic moments in there and, um, you know, uh, Ahsoka training the younglings, Ahsoka training the rebels on Onderon, and then even Ahsoka walking away at season five, because you know, the book is called I Am a Padawan, which it's part of the I Am series for Star Wars and Little Golden Books. And, you know, it teaches young readers, you know, about how to be a princess, how to be a droid, you know, how to be a pilot. So, um, you know, I'm a Padawan really teaches kids how to be a student. And, you know, even though Soka is in a galaxy far, far away, um, you know, all the lessons are relatable. They're lessons of failure and bravery and friendship and knowledge and hope and you know at the end um you know it's about choosing your own path and you know you being a teacher i know you can relate it's like you do your best to you know to teach your students um you know for for the game of life and but you know it, ultimately at the end they have to choose their own path and i was very very excited that they allowed me to include that in there um, and so the book ends on, on Ahsoka walking away and challenging the reader, asking them, are you ready to be a Padawan? And, um, you know, asking what will, what will your path be? What will your journey be? Yes, very well said. And, and that, you know, that's the big challenge we play as, as mentors. And I love, I love that you said that. So thank you for that. While it's a shame, by the way, that San Diego Comic-Con won't be taking place this year, which is unfortunate, but it's really the only safe option for you. How has this pandemic impacted you and her universe? As you are such a positive person, I'm guessing it will fuel even more inspirational things, products and opportunities. Well, you know, it's, it's this pandemic uh, is affecting everyone. I mean, I, there's, there's no person that is that this hasn't touched. You know, whether it's, um, you know, literally your physical health or even your mental health or it's your job or your business, um, it's, it's literally touched everyone. Um, you know, with her universe, we're, we're okay. Uh, you know, it's definitely a bummer that we're not going to be able to attend, you know, conventions like San Diego Comic Con. Um, but we were still able to launch a brand new Clone Wars collection and the support that we received was absolutely incredible. Um, but I, I will say for me, her universe from, from day one has always been two parts. It's a merchandise line, but more so a community. And to me, that's, you know, first and always has remained, you know, first and foremost. And so what we've been able to do during this time is really, um, you know, engage the conversation around our Mental Health Monday post. Um, I've been an advocate for mental health and, and breaking the stigma surrounding mental health. And so every Monday we've been we've been doing posts on social media for well over a year called Mental Health Monday. But during this pandemic and, and the quarantine and shutdown, um, we've been doing something every Monday uh, surrounding these posts. So I've been trying to do Instagram lives or mindfulness um, exercises. And uh, it's, you know, like you said, just really trying to um, do 
do what I can and, and, and play whatever part I can during this time and, and spread hope and light and positivity. Well, it's very much appreciated. And to me, this, as well as all the other, other wonderful things you do, it's, it's a microcosm of you, both you and Ahsoka's impact on Star Wars mythology and fandom. And uh, speaking for me personally, from my heart, I think you were, as I said, you're a wonderful ambassador. I believe everything that you do and everything you put out there because you are a positive force for good. And we Star Wars fans, if I may speak for them in this moment, uh, just are so thankful for you. Oh gosh, you are too kind. You know, I, as the, the feeling is beyond mutual. I, my heart literally is so full of gratitude every single day when I, you know, go to social media and I see our incredible community and the support that we've built, um, you know, being the voice of Ahsoka and being a part of the Star Wars universe has literally changed my life and changed my life for the better. And so, you know, I, I say thank you to you and everyone listening as well. And I'm, I'm so grateful um, for all of the support that you've given me and my family over the years. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a cup of coffee with me and for helping to spread the word about our Star Wars family we've got here at Coffee with Kenobi. Be sure to tune in Monday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash live or www.facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi and have a cup of coffee, tea, or any beverage of your choosing as we continue the conversation. To join us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, and share your Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-friendly, spoiler-free place that is also drama-free, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community and be a part of the conversation, talk about this week's show, or just talk some Star Wars. It's a lot of fun and you'll make some new friends as well as catch up with longtime friends as well. I also want to thank our new and longtime friends who join us in the CWK Cantina, and let you know how much I appreciate your help and encouragement and love being able to give back to you with CWK Pour Over, the exclusive weekly podcast not heard anywhere else. I want to thank Dennis Keithley, Jason Hall, Angela Sauce, Chris Gavarka, Aaron Harris, Alexander Moylan, Ross Halliban, Jeff Ellis, David Nicely, Jessica Berry, Colby Mead, Frank Mulder, LJ Souter, Mark Suter, Nick Deco, Eric Struthers, Jared Cantor, Brian McKinney, Daz Davies, Thea Selby, Chris Metz, Caroline Maselli, Jim Caprin, Blake Weaver, Dan Ream, Kurt McKellen, Christine Turk, Simbot Deftardarian, Ian Thompson, Alex Procasio, Hannah, Tyler Pompa, Connie Shee, Susan Gray, Chelsea Sandsbury, Joss Boylan, and Yancey Evans. If you want an additional way to help out the show, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash support. And join us in the Coffee with Kenobi Cantina. It's a great way to support and help out the show, and 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital to support the incredibly important work they are doing to help these brave children and their families. Plus, contributors at the CWK All-Star level can watch a video podcast of CWK Pour Over, and contributors at the CWK MVP level can participate in an exclusive live stream hosted by me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club twice a month. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. In addition to being part of the community on Facebook, please don't forget to visit our website at www.coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, videos, and so much more. If you have a question for me or just want to share your thoughts on the air, feel free to email me at danzy at coffeewithkenobi.com and I'll share them on the show. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R. There are also a lot more ways to connect with me and Coffee with Kenobi on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi and check us out on Pinterest. You can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network. And you can find my writings on CWK's website as well as starwars.com where I'm an official blogger there as well as on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars, as well as other pop culture topics. And 
If you are considering starting a podcast or a blog, let me know how I can help you get started and help you make your creative vision a reality. Be sure to check out danzamedia.com and we can get the process started. I am also available to come to your school, conference, business, or organization to talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. I want to inspire you to be inspired. This is your chance to take that first step into a larger world. Thanks as always to our CWK sponsors, especially MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, our travel partner and your one-stop shop for all things Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Lines, or anywhere on the planet. Please go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel to book your magical vacation and help support Coffee with Kenobi in the process. If you like the show, please tweet out that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. And if the force is especially with you, please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes or Google Podcasts. Every review makes a huge difference and helps to spread the word. Go to iTunes and search Coffee with Kenobi and you'll see the show there. My circle of friends has grown so much because of each and every one of you. And it means so much to me that we have a wonderful Star Wars community to share it with. Oh my goodness. And that, that will be to the end of time, my friend. Well, it's been such an absolute joy to have a cup of coffee with you. Where can people reach out yes. to you and find out about the great things at Her Universe and continue the conversation with you? Well, anything with Her Universe, it's still HerUniverse.com or on social media. It's just at Her Universe um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, but personally, I now have my own Instagram page. Uh, it's just at Ashley Eckstein on Instagram. And it's just me. So you'll get daily updates. Um, and, you know, that's where you'll you'll get the, like, kind of the breaking news on anything Star Wars or Ahsoka or anything I'm working on. So um, that's that's the best place uh, to, to get the, to get any updates. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so very much. Oh, Dan, thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy my cups of coffee with you. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. 